let's talk about a lady who has represented our country in the best way possible, who has returned with gold medals, and who just time and time again, we just have wonderful, wonderful stories. So Nathalie Dutoy, welcome to the Chaya Film Studios. Thank you very much. It's it great is, to be back again. Well, it's lovely, lovely to have you here. So listen, you are not a person who gives up, are you? Well, I think, you know, if out there everybody has chances when they want to give up, when they want to carry on. And I think sometimes, you know, everything does get to you and you just want to say, you know, let's stop. But what's been, what I've been very grateful for is that I have a lot of friends around me and, and the team. And um, without that teamwork, I don't think I would have been able to move on and, and um, you know, achieve a lot of the dreams and goals that I've set for myself. So, you know, that's what's been keeping me going. And um, I think just like everybody else, you know, you have your good moments, you have your bad moments. But it's to, to keep going and to, to keep realizing that you've got to go out there and, and be the best that you can be. So you rely heavily on the people around you, your support system. Oh, definitely. And I think um, going through life, I, you realize that you can't achieve anything just by yourself. And um, especially with, with other people out there that, that don't want you to achieve anything. Or, you know, you have that handful that, that are behind you and rooting for you, as, as most of South Africa is. Um, and, you know, they've, the fans have been great out there and, and been supporting me. But there's those few people that just don't want you to achieve anything and, and do everything in their power to, to set you back. So... Um, it's great to have that team on board and, and to have people that believe not just in you but believe in the same dreams and the same goals as you and um, will, are willing to do everything to achieve them. So let me ask you this, when you hear that there are people who don't want the best for you, who don't think you're going to be the best, who just, you know, the energy that they give you is not the energy that you need, how do you deal with it? Because you're talking about a support system, you have it, but I, I don't care what you say about having a great support system, the strength relies in you it's in you you are that kind of a person if it's another person in that position maybe they wouldn't have achieved what you have achieved how do you wake up knowing that these you know people that these naysayers exist you know i think it's it's been it's it's quite tough to try and get through it and i think i look at myself as if i have almost two types of personalities and you know the one out there goes and and really wants to achieve something and the other one looks at the others that don't want you to achieve and says you know but why and and questions mm. And it's, it's, it's basically a battle and a fight. And I think what brings it all together for me is the fact that when I get into the swimming pool and I can work hard and you forget about those types of people and you get into the pool and the hard work will pay off at the end. So you get in, you switch off, you swim as, as hard as possible. And, um, you know, with the team, with the group, it's always nicer because you try and beat them. There's lots of competition and there's always someone taking your times. And, and uh, you know, that, that basically that, that camaraderie is, is something that keeps you going and, and allows you to forget about that. Once you get out the pool, again, you've got to face all those things. And, and it is quite difficult. So um, it's, I think it's a battle between, between two athletes all the time and mm -hmm. wanting to get there, but then having these people. And you question why. You know, why, why are they trying to be against you? What did you do, you know, uh, to them? So I think from that perspective, as long as I get into the pool and I work, I, I'm pretty okay. And as long as you do your best, and listen, you bring the medals home, <laughs> you, you, there's, nothing, there's nothing more powerful than that, is there, than that, than that success? Well, I think for me, you know, it's not really about the medals. It's about going and, and doing the best that you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not just coming sixth or eighth. You know, obviously I've, I've won a couple of races, so you don't want to come sixth in the next one. Um, but it's to improve times and it's it's to, to do better and better and to better your own records or your own standings. I think that's what, what keeps you going. And, and at the end of the day, you know, that's what the achievements are. And um, by the time that you finish your career, it's to say, I've achieved everything that I set out to. Well, Natalie, you started swimming from a very young age. I'm talking about competing because you, you, became, you, you began competing internationally at the age of 14. That's pretty young. <laughs> no, it is. Um, I think I, I was six years old when I started swimming. And, you know, for a lot of the families out there, they think that some of their kids can't swim by the age of six. I was one of those that I refused to put my foot Rubbish. into a pool. I promise you. And um, eventually, one day, I just got in and I'm I I'm going to tell my son. I'm going <laughs> to use you as an example. So okay. one day, I just turned around and I got into the swimming pool and I started swimming. And that was... That was how I started, and I just, I loved it, because I could just get in, and I could just swim, and, you know, you forget about everything behind you, you can um, give everything, you know, you give your heart and soul into the into the water, and, um, you know, I started doing well, and the, the better you do, the more you train, and the, the harder you train, so so that was sort of what kept me going, and, and um, I think I'm one of those people that, you know, you try and set goals, and you don't ever want to really say that I could never achieve it. Um, but, you know, you got there and you do everything in your power 
So in the end, you sort of have achieved it, even if you haven't, because you know that you've tried everything. Mm. You, you were hit by a car, and you were injured, and that's when your leg was amputated from the knee down. When you were lying in hospital, um, who was it who came and told you that that, that had to amputate your leg? Yeah, I, I had a motorbike accident, and obviously, you know, lying in the road, I knew everything that happened. I knew I could feel everything. And you remember it all clearly? While I was lying in the road, um, I, when I got to the hospital, I don't remember anything. And um, I remember a guy coming to, help, to tell me that they have to amputate, and, and that's as far as I got. Um, woke up in, in the hospital bed and, you know, had the amputation. So... And then found out that it hadn't been just been a day that had gone past, it had actually been a week. Jeez. So, you know, from that perspective, it was looking down, it was realizing that, you know, there is no leg. Um, my parents did, however, get some disabled people in to speak to me and to share their story with me. And, um, you know, at least uh, I think about out of six of them, one or two of them were only positive. So I think looking back at that, I never wanted to be the one that said, I, I wish it never happened. Um, I, I really want my leg back. I wish I could sue everybody or, you know, sue the person that knocked into me. So from that perspective, already, I, I'd learned a lot from the other disabled um, people that came to visit me. So that was how I got up and that's how I, I started uh, swimming again and started walking. And, you know, everyone kept asking, are you going to get back into the pool again? And Or, you know, what are you going to do? And to tell you the honest truth, I never, ever questioned it um, until people started asking me questions. So from then on, it was just about getting in and, and trying to start again and, and see what I could do. Natalie, are you telling me you weren't angry? No, you know, it's, it's something that I've always, I've always believed that life happens, you know, things happen for a reason. And when you have an accident, it, it wasn't anger. I think sometimes you go through hurt, um, you go through a lot of those things. Um, but I think it could have happened to anybody, you know, and I think that's the course of life. You've just got to go out there and and live with it and um, obviously there are days in which you wish you know you could just run like everybody else or when you're in a hurry just to be able to keep up with everybody or you know I could take back all the politics that are happening at the moment and and sometimes you wish that but at the end of the day this is who I am and and that's how you've got to live and the rehabilitation it took it took quite a long time you know having to learn to walk again um, getting into the water, swimming again. As you said, people giving the idea, when are you going to start swimming again? At what point did you realize that actually you could start competing as a swimmer once again? You know, it was physiotherapy was probably the toughest part of my, of my whole accident. Mm -hmm. And um, I, was, I was fortunate that I, I had a really good physiotherapist. And I think I went through a whole year of physiotherapy, which a lot of people think it's just a, a one week or a two week or a one month sort of cycle. And... My physiotherapist took me through lots of physio, teaching me to strengthen first before you can actually start walking again and to learn to use other muscles rather than what you what you were used to because you don't you no longer have those muscles that you were used to. So, um, you know, before I learned to walk, it was strengthening. It was trying to obviously I don't I can't actually build up the muscles. So it was trying to learn how to use my butt instead of my leg, mm. which I would have used. So, you know, that was tough because there were days in which I couldn't actually use those muscles at all. And obviously I was never used to using them, so it was something completely strange. Um, I, I, I learned quite quickly and, you know, my physiotherapist would um, make sort of obstacle courses for me that if I walked upstairs and I knocked my toe or something, um, I would have to do 10 push-ups. And so we progressed. <laughs> we progressed rapidly, you know. You. Um, the hospital leg was broken. Um, so I actually learned how to walk on a table, which was more or less the height of, of my other leg, and um, just with a blue, thin blue mat on it. So that's how I learned to walk. And he would then take me into um, Kirstenbosch Gardens in, in Cape Town, and I would walk over streams and twigs and uh, big tree stumps to be able to get to know and learn my prosthesis and learn, you know, to be able to trust it. So I went through a lot of a lot of physiotherapy. As to swimming, I never questioned it. I sort of got into the swimming pool and I realized that I could just swim, um, you know, like I was able to just before I lost my leg. So obviously I lost all the muscle, all the fitness, and I was behind all the little nine-year-olds in the lane, and I absolutely hated that. But soon moved up into the fastest lane, and that's that's basically how my career progressed. And the, the better you do, and I started winning competitions in South Africa, and the Olympic dream started becoming a reality.